Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. Ashadu wa la ilahi illallah. Wa ashadu wa muhammadin abduhu wa rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Did you ever go to one of the Muslim schools and listen to how their children respond when you say salam alaikum and they go salam alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu <laughs> alhamdulillah alhamdulillah how many here ever went to a muslim school like that when they were kids anybody everyone yeah we got a few in the back okay mashallah in the United States, you know, we have quite a few schools that we have that are just weekend schools because they go to the regular public school during the week. So the subject we want to talk about tonight is cool Islam. And I found the original video of it today. I actually did a program in, I think it was 2002. And what was happening, we were set up outside the masjid on Friday, Juma, with some tapes. In those days, we didn't have all the digital stuff that we do today. We still had the VHS tapes, you know, and the little cassette tapes. And it was very cold outside, very, very cold. It was uh, actually snowing. And I had a big camel bisht, you know, it's bisht, a big one wrapped around me. And the way it looked, it looked like I weighed about 500 pounds. I really looked fat. And the imam passed by me and he saw us sitting up there with the table. And I was planning on doing the second khutbah, going for that one. So anyway, he told me, he said, we need you to come in and give the khutbah. I said, no, 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 I have to stay with the table. No, come in. So when I got in there, it was still cold inside. There was, uh, the heater maybe wasn't working, I don't know, but I had to keep the bish on. So when, I, when you give the khutbah, you come in, you, you say, salam alaikum, then you sit down, and then they give an adhan, you know that. So while he was giving the adhan, I was thinking, hmm, what should be the subject? And all I could think about was how cold it was. <laughs> so that's where it went. I went ahead and posted this one on the Facebook account for Guidance TV today. So if any of you are interested in seeing that old video, it's there. In any case, the concept that we were talking about, that I was talking about in that particular was directed at the youth, because we had a lot of the young people there in the masjid. And I was thinking at the time, of course, I'm not going to talk about cold Islam, but make it cool. And looking at the youth, I was thinking, you know what? We should really make this interesting. And, and in order to do it today, maybe I'll add a couple of things and treat it a little differently. But... There is something that is super cool for all ages in Islam. And when you're reading hadith, especially about the youth in Islam, I wish we would pay more attention to this. Because some of the youth around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were so keen about Islam, about being Muslims, that if we would see them today, we would be very surprised Imagine a boy not even big enough to carry a sword wants to, carry, to go and fight in a battle. Not just he wants to do it, he's crying, begging. Want to go to, to, with everybody else. Not like today, when you can't even find adults that are interested in supporting Islam enough to even go out in the street and just give out some papers or something, you know. Conviction 
of the youth in those days was so amazing. And one of the very first of the people to accept Islam was who? How old was he? Nine? That's what I know. So imagine a nine-year-old. Do we have any nine-year-olds that are with us today? Anybody's nine years old? Who? Who? Stand up. If you're nine years old, stand up. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Wow. Look at that. I'm going to ask the one closest to me. Thank you, gentlemen. Come here. Come here. Come on over here. Are you really nine years old? Yes. What's your name? That's me. All right. Look at everybody. Say salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. MashaAllah. Now, you're nine years old. What grade are you in at school? Uh, three. You're in the third grade. Number three, yeah? What kind of grades do you get? Not sure. Yeah. Is your mother here? Yes. That's why you're not sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't blame you. Very wise for nine years old. I like that. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's smart, too. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So do you think Islam is cool? Yes. All right. Well, that's it. We're done with our program for tonight. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Out of me. You can go sit down now. MashaAllah. All of us uh, in the room here, I think, are Muslim, but I'll just double check. If, if you're a Muslim, raise your hand. Wow. Raise your other hand, too. Same time. Now connect them at the top. Everybody's ready for airport security. I'm the latter bit out of me. I like to use those little things to put us all on the same page. Not just that we're trying to be humorous, but to soften the hearts and open our minds to our subjects. And usually before I do anything in the program, I will give some little something like that because I found that after we relax a little bit, things seem to go smoother. Perhaps the shaitan is, is a little further away from us, hopefully, and we have a chance to open our minds and, uh, and our hearts to the message. Now, I did ask how many were Muslim. Is there anybody here that's not a Muslim? Anybody that? One? Oh, mashallah, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a special guest with us tonight, mashallah. And uh, I think he's older than 90 years old, though. Alhamdulillah. You're most welcome, and we appreciate you coming and being with us tonight. How do you like being surrounded by all these terrorists? Oh, Muslims. <laughs> Now, how many of you were with us? Uh, we had a program last night, didn't we? Last today. Today we had a program. How many were at the program today? Anybody? You notice some of the same jokes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't charge extra to reuse them. <laughs> I'm doing that. So when we talk about what Islam really is, I think it would be better to look at the etymology of the word itself to put it in perspective. For people of faith, meaning someone who does believe that there is a God and has faith in the God. In other words, not just accepting there must be a God, but wants to have some kind of relationship with Almighty God. For those people, then 
there is a general attitude that they would have, whether they are a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim or whatever, there is, there is this one common thing that there is a God in, the, in their mind and also they want to have some kind of relationship. This is based on, uh, you know, you can study this from uh, an objective point of view. You'll find there are some common things. Now, when I analyze or look at the word Islam, take it apart and look at it, I'm going to find that there are at least some common denominators in it for all the faiths. Maybe not all of them will apply, but watch and see. For instance, the first part of the word Islam in the English language, we might say that this is surrender, surrendering to God. I know the Christians find that a very attractive perspective to be in this surrender to Almighty God. Another one is to be submissive to what God wants to done. And another one is obedience to the commandments. All of these are actually in the word Islam itself. Then to be sincere. I'm not sure about all religions, but I'm pretty sure about most of them that there is a certain amount of sincerity required to be a participant in that religion. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and again, the sincerity is in Islam. Following that, we have peace, surrender, submission, and the sincerity, the obedience, and the peace with Almighty God. Now imagine that in today's world, most people don't know the meaning of the word. So they have added, those who are not Muslim, have added to that the words like extremists, radical, even terrorist. The problem with that is if you know what the word means, then all of a sudden it doesn't fit. You can't use those terms in conjunction with the word Islam. You could not say that somebody is a radical, extreme, sincere person. It doesn't sound right a radically terrorist kind of a peaceful person. It, it, it's ridiculous. Unfortunately, we Muslims have not taken the opportunity to break that down and put it out there in the language that we're speaking to the people. We leave it in the Arabic. Now, as a noun, the word Islam represents the action of Aslama. Aslama is surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, safety, security, and peace with Allah. And there's more, but they all follow this same trend. Amazing. And one who is doing it is a Mu-Islam. So if we had translated that, they, they wouldn't be able to get away with using those words. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that some Muslims are not bad people. We know that there are a lot of people out there who claim to be Muslim, and not all of them are perfect. In fact, none of us are really perfect, but we see immediately how the word is being misused. Could be that we could use this in our favor because the more that the news, the people that promote these ideas, the more they do that, then when we show someone, like our friend who's visiting with us right now, if we show you this is what the word means, immediately you're going to think, well, wait a minute. If that's what the word means, how could anybody say an Islamic terrorist? What else are they lying about? 
and then an investigation would begin. I want to look into this. Let me see exactly what these people are all about. Huh? Maybe I, you guys got some kind of book I can read? Ah. As a matter of fact, we do have a book. And you're most welcome to read it. Have you had a chance to see the Quran yet? Not yet? I think before you get out of here today, you're going to have a chance. What do you think? Yes, there's a chance. Maybe even take one home. He, he can keep it. No deposit required. MashaAllah. Sound like he's offering to give you a free book already. <laughs> I think you hit a home run coming here tonight. As a matter of fact, how cool would it be if someone came out just to observe, see what's going on, and they wind up changing their life for something for eternity and being in the very best place in the next life. How cool is that? And this is the reality of Islam. That it's not just a story, it's not just a joke, it's not a made-up fairy tale. Speaking of that, one of the big objections that a lot of people about Islam is they think that it's like every other religion. And I've heard atheists tell me that I don't need a man-made religion. There's nobody in this room that really, as far as I know, wants a man-made religion, right? But this is the idea that they have because they have something they call science. But actually, what they're following in atheism is a man-made science. Do you know what I mean by that? This is the big problem today that many of our youth are looking at that man-made science as being an alternative to faith. And that's not cool. Because so many times you can prove that what they thought yesterday is wrong in favor of what they found out today. In fact, I think you could uh, pretty much say everybody here has heard at least one or two examples in your own lifetime where scientists have been baffled, couldn't figure out something, and then suddenly they figured it out and they had it. And then only a few years later, oh, no, an update. <laughs> 2.0 came out, right? Is it true? Okay, so this also is another problem. When people begin to lose their faith in whatever it is, then disaster happens in their life. When people leave faith to go into that man-made science, very often they are lost, their soul becomes lost, and they will fall into another trap. And that's when they begin to take drugs or alcohol or get involved in pornography and other things that they do. They still don't find what they're looking for, and eventually they lose all hope and everything, and these are the people who will commit suicide. That is the most uncool thing that you can imagine. Judaism, Christianity, Islam all teach that any person committing suicide will remain in hell forever. And that is not acceptable. I mentioned this in conjunction with something else, not so much about our topic of being cool or cool Islam, but just to realize the direction that we're all heading right now. Because as more and more people are looking at man-made religions, they are going toward man-made science. 
people are leaving the Christian church in droves. Many churches are for sale all over the United States and Europe right now. They, they don't use them. There's nobody going. So they'll sell them. Muslims buy them. But they're not the only ones. The same is true for other religions. A lot of times the, the church will get sold and they'll move into just a little strip center, a little shopping center, and open up and just have a few chairs in there, maybe not much bigger than this room, and only meet there on Sunday and not even fill up the room. This is happening. It's not exclusive to the monotheistic faiths. This is happening to all of the faiths. There are a few mega churches out there that get a whole lot of people that show up and go crazy and hallelujah and all the rest of it. But for the most part, it's going downhill really fast. I wish I could say that that is not true about Islam and Muslims, but it actually is. How many of you heard that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world? You heard that? For the last 30 years. Is that right, Shay? Huh? Yeah, 30 years or I don't know. I haven't been Muslim that long. You've been Muslim a lot longer than me. It's growing, but for a long time we've heard this. Islam is the fastest growing religion. Actually, that is kind of true. Of the religions, the accepted religions, Islam is the one that's growing. But it's not the fastest growing group. The fastest growing group is atheism. When I was a kid, a hundred years ago, the people of atheism were so small in number that they, would, they wouldn't even admit it. They wouldn't say it. Oh, they were, yeah, I'm a Christian, more or less, like that. Because they didn't want to admit being an atheist. Today, they're so proud of it. It's like, yeah, yeah. When I was in Sweden, the very first time, they told me, as they were taking me a tour around Sweden, and they said, you know, we're proud of the fact that we were the last country to allow Christianity in and the first one to kick them out. I guess they thought I'd be happy hearing that being a Muslim, but of course, if you care about faith, you don't want to see anybody become atheist because he said we are number one in the world for atheism. And we're number one in the world for suicide. Why would that be impressive? I don't know. He even told me, he said, you know the bridge that we're standing on right now? We were in Stockholm, Sweden. It's a lot of bridges. He said, you know what it's famous for? I said, I don't know. What's it famous for? He said, people jumping off and killing themselves. So I, there had a big fence on it. He said, they'll crawl up over it and jump. So I looked down and I said, there's... There's no water down there. It's just a highway. He said, yeah, the idea is if the fall doesn't kill you, a truck will. He got it all figured out. This is pretty sad when you think about it. Now, I heard similar things in Denmark. Number one in the world for atheism. Number one in the world for suicide. Finland, Norway, all of these countries... Holland, Netherlands, every one of them told me something similar, being number one in atheism and being number one in suicide. There's a correlation there. <laughs> I think that you can make a connection real quick. Being an atheist is not the best idea. Definitely not cool. In fact, at one stage, I had the opportunity to take some visitors in one of the masajid around and showing some things. 
And while I was doing it, I said, is it true you guys are all atheists? And most of them were. And I said, is it also true that you're number one in the world for suicide? And they said, oh, yeah. I said, guys, why not think about this? And then I began to explain a few of the aspects of Islam. And we had some people right then accepted Islam. Because the common sense of Islam is what really makes it cool for any generation. The term that we are using tonight by being cool, by the way, originates at the end of the 1950s. That's how old that expression is. And all through the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and even today, people say, is that cool? Is that not cool? Is that true? Still use that phrase. So using that concept of something being really acceptable, being in the inn and so on, why is it that we have a tendency to feel like our faith is not that cool? Why? Because we haven't examined exactly what our faith is. Especially when somebody's looking at it as something man-made, human being came up with. Most of the faiths, in fact, all the other faiths out there have something about it that is man-made. And that's why it's not acceptable to Allah. Now let's take a look at the Quran and have a look at some of the things that uh, perhaps help us better understand our topic tonight. In the Quran, in in chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, In a dina in the lahil Islam. Now, translators will say, more or less, that for sure the only religion with Allah is Islam. Two words, they're leaving in uh, the English, the Arabic, if you leave deen, and Islam, in the Arabic, it's more accurate, but the people don't know what they're talking about. They translate deen as religion, right? Right? But deen is more than that, because it is your way of life. It's what you're doing. So it's not just that it, we're talking about a religion that came 1,400 years ago. It's describing the way of a person or people and how their relationship is with the law and with what he created the human beings okay so now you look at it and you think hmm what is islam well, we already talked about that so for sure with the law the way the only way that he's going to really accept is that people have surrender submission obedience sincerity and peace with him and to verify that, you just go up to verse 85 in the same surah, and you'll find all the blemish of China regime. Well, my man, tell you, guy, rule Islam, Adina, Falah, Yukalah, and whom, well, who will feel out here, Timinal Khatsarin, that whoever wants a faith or a way or a deen other than Islam, Allah is not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, he's going to be amongst the losers. Because it's not just talking about the religion, it's talking about this person is making up their own way. Now we come to man-made religion. Because if you don't want what Allah gave you, you're making up your own way. Simple as that. And Allah doesn't accept man-made religions. So on this point, I can agree with the atheist who said, I don't want a man-made religion. I don't either. I'm not trying to appeal to mankind with what I'm doing. I'm hoping that Almighty Allah will accept it. And then ultimately, that would be cool. <laughs> Make sense? All right. So we got that established. There's a few other words that we kind of get lost on. And I referred to one of them today, and I was hoping that we'd get a chance to talk about it tonight. And again, this is something that for the young people, anybody here 
under the age of 18. If you're, if you're 17 or younger, put your hand up. So I just know where you're at. 17 or younger, put your hand way up so I can see. Okay? Yeah, all right. Video games. Yeah, look at that big smile, mashallah. Come on, come up here for a second, just for one second. All right, come up here. That tall guy, how, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven, mashallah. What's your name? Naufal. What? Naufal. Now what? Naufal, Naufal. Naufal. All right. Tell me, tell me what grade you're in. Uh, fifth grade. Fifth grade. You get good grades. I don't know yet. Never mind. We won't put you on the spot. All right. All right. So, you like video games? Yes. I saw your eyes light up, and I saw the smile go all the way back to your ears when I said video games. By the way, I'm not giving away any free video games, so I don't know why you got so excited. But have you ever played a video game and the monsters are coming at you and you have to shoot them or something, you, they're trying to kill you? No. You never played that kind? You never saw that kind? You don't even know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Okay. So if somebody's playing a video game and monsters are trying to kill them and they don't have enough weapons to fight back, but they got points, they can buy something to protect them against their enemies, what's that thing that they buy that they want to have between them and the enemy? Uh, I don't really know. Anybody know what it is? Let me hear you say it real loud. Shield. Now you know, right? All right, go sit down. A shield, that's what we were looking for. Now, because I related it to what you know, I'll tell you what it is in Arabic. You ready? Taqwa. Huh? Taqwa? How could that be? I thought it was righteousness and piousness and all of that kind of stuff. Actually, there's nothing wrong with saying righteousness and pious, but that's a result of having a shield on the day of judgment. You want to have a shield of protection against Allah's ghadab. Ghadab means wrath. Anger that's going to produce a result. And you, you'll need a shield, a really big shield, and it is your righteousness on this earth. So now that you got that, think about it. Because when you're playing a video game and you get killed, you can always get another life, start the game over again, right? Not so on the Day of Judgment. Definitely not cool. But the shield, now what, what is the shield? Well, first of all, we want to back up just a little bit. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the Quran in Surah Fatiha and just read the end of it when we talk about, give us guidance. And we say, Allah Billahi Mishnah Tan Razim, Edina Saratul Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Saratul Edina and Amta Alayhim, the path of those that have Allah's favor, those people who are good with Allah. Ghairul Magdubi Alehim, what it's all in, and not the path of those who have the Gadab Magdubi Gadab, that's what that is. Not the path of the people that have Allah's Gadab or are lost or go astray. Gadab, as I said, is not just anger, it is the kind of anger that will produce a result. For instance, sometime you get mad at somebody. You're upset with somebody. And you, you'll be like, oh, man. And you be get over it, though. And then you're okay. But the kind of anger we're talking about with wrath in the English language 
is the kind where somebody is going to pick up a, a stick or something and start beating things with it. He's going to go crazy. And this case, Allah will be punishing people. And he'll be throwing them into the hellfire. So this is definitely not the day to be without a shield. So keep reading because you need to know how to get that shield because this is not a game. This is your real life. It's your dean. It's your way. So keep reading. The very next words give you the clue. Ready? So, some of you can help me if you know it. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam mim. Thaliko kitabu la reba fi hudil lil mutaqeen. Everybody know that? Huh? Thaliko kitab, what does that mean? Hmm? No, Thalik. I didn't say hadha. That is the book. It's clear in Arabic. Thaliko kitab. That book. Where is the book? Well, it's in the hearts and minds of the Muslims. It can be written down in, you know, in a mushaf, mushaf. But when we say that, you're talking about the book of the law. Darikul Kitab, La Rebbe No doubt. Next word, Huda. Um, by the way, this time I was not talking about the TV channel. Huda. Huda. Guidance. Because you just needed guidance, right? Remember you said the Dinas Rathamus came? I want to be guided. And it said, Huda Lil Mutakin. This book that we're talking about is the book, no doubt in it, and its guidance for the mutakin. What is mutakin? Taqwa. Same thing we're talking about. So now imagine, here's these people with this shield. And they're being protected by their shield on the day of judgment against the anger, the wrath of Allah. I definitely need to be in that group. But what is it exactly? Just keep reading. The people that believe in the unseen. Now here's where we run into a problem with the folks who have given up on religion. They've given up on everything and they went over to man-made science. Because they don't want to believe in anything they can't see or hear or touch or smell or feel. They're not going to accept it. No way, Jose. Because I'm a scientist. I only believe in stuff I see. Really? Yep. So you don't believe in molecules? Oh, yeah, I believe in molecules. But you can't see them. Well, uh, but uh, you don't believe in atoms? Of course we believe in atoms. You can't see atoms. You don't believe in the protons, neutrons, electrons of the atom? Of course we do, but you can't see them. In fact, there's a whole lot of things about space exploration that they tell us and show us pictures and designs that are all fabricated. These are estimations of what's there, and they're putting and plotting it down and even adding colors to it. And it's not something that's really coming back from outer space. Did you know that? Go to an observatory sometime and see what they're showing you and what they're talking about, and then ask them to show you concrete proof of a real picture. And they don't have it. It doesn't exist. These are estimations. Also talking about, and by the way, I heard some Muslims who said 
that Islam believes that we came from monkeys. Did you hear about that? I heard it from some people that said they were Muslims. And I heard it from a bishop in the Catholic Church. I was shocked. Because science can prove without a shadow of a doubt that we could not have evolved from monkeys. Let's talk about that for a minute. Has anybody here in the medical field, anybody is a doctor, anybody here? Medical doctor, nurse, practitioner, somebody, huh? In a hospital, when somebody has been burned real seriously, they will take skin from maybe their leg or something to put on their arm. But sometimes there's several burns and there's not enough skin that they can pull it to put it in other places. So when they need skin to put on a human being, there's only one animal that they go to, and it's not a monkey. What animal is it? Oh, you knew about that, huh? The oink oink. Hanzir. Why are they going to the pig? If somebody needs a valve in their heart and they get it, they go to an animal and pull the heart valve out of that animal and put it in a human being, it's not an orangutan. It's not a chimpanzee. It's not a gorilla. It's not a spider monkey. It is a oink oink. Again. That's true. Why? And genetically, they'll tell you that, what was it I read? 96% that they could prove, 96% there's an alignment of the genes, et cetera, the, between the human being and the monkey. It should be 100% if we came from those guys. What do we do, lose percentage? I'm serious. But to have fun with them, what I do, I don't know if you remember this, but sometime I take a banana, especially with the atheist, give him a banana. And wait a minute, that's not the joke yet. And then I'll have a banana for myself, and I'll say, go ahead, open it. Now, most people will do this, okay? Most people will do it. They take the top of the banana, and they pull it back. And if it's really not ripe yet, it'll bend over. And you got to play with it and try to get it open, right? Is that right? A monkey doesn't do that. A monkey in a tree is going from tree to tree looking for a banana or food to eat. He'll open the bottom of the banana. Because if there's a problem with it, he'll just go to the next one. And if he's going to eat it, he'll open it all the way up and eat it as he comes to it. And he's not going to drop that thing down on the ground because then animals on the ground know there's a monkey up there. He's just going to let it rot. That, that, the leftovers is just going to hang up there. He's going to do the next one. Why should he pull that down? Now he needs two hands. to. And what's going to happen? He's going to fall out of the tree. But by opening the bottom of it, he can still hold up with one hand, right? Stop and think. So whenever I give it to the atheist and he's playing with it, I tell him the story about the monkey and what he does, and then I ask him, what do you do, forget? Now, that's not a proof. That is not a proof. But it gets the attention of a human being, and they start thinking about it. Exactly what am I upon? What am I doing? Why am I listening to these people? The fact is they're dissatisfied with man-made religion, and they've made up a man-made science to come up with everything. And I'm going to end this part of it right now by telling you one thing. 
Just last week, Stephen Hawking passed away. Most of you, maybe you don't know who he is, but most of you have seen him in the wheelchair and he's got his head laying over like this and his computer's doing all the talking for him. Everybody know who I'm talking about? I actually saw the video. Somebody sent me the link and I watched the video some years ago. He was in a program that said on the banner, you know, up above, it said where everything came from. That was the name of it. He was supposed to talk about it, where the universe came from. That's what it said. And he was supposed to talk about where the universe came from. Instead, he did the typical thing, which they like to do, talking about a, an explosion. Boom. And out of the explosion, just a random boom, everything came into being. Now, whenever an atheist tells me about the Big Bang, we have our own thing in the Quran that talks about something that could be equated to that, but it's not the kind of boom they're talking about. And I tell them, don't come to us as Muslims and talk to us about explosions. According to the media, we're the experts on that. Sure. That's what they say. So when, and I, I want you to think about what we're saying here. When you say that there's just an explosion, something had to blow up. What was it? So when he was done with his talk about how the blue-green algae in the world and all, the, uh, all of a sudden after it set for so many, many millions of years, amoeboids came out of the blue-green algae and started eating it. And then something bigger came along and ate them, and then something bigger came along and ate them over millions of years and millions and millions of years. When he was all done with this whole thing, the lady hosting the show, she said, it's time for the Q&A, question and answers. She said, but I want to ask the first question. You gave a lovely talk. We enjoyed so much learning all of the things you said, but... You never told us where it came from. Where did it come from? How did it originate? What he said next was clear. He said, the universe can create itself whenever and wherever it wants to. couple of points here in case you didn't catch it. Atheists never use the word create. Never. Because then they'd be a creationist and not an atheist. And he said once you're implying an intelligence behind the whole universe when you say want or desire. Is that true? In fact, he's saying the universe itself is the God pretty close to what the Hindus believe. Later, after so many people were writing to him and talking about that, he came out with another video saying, well, you misunderstood me. It was taken out of context, and I don't want to talk about it. That is enough right there about this subject of the man-made science. The other thing, just briefly, if you want to look on our website, I'll tell you, search for Islam.com. It has an access to all of our thousands of websites. And you will not run into commercials and spam and junk, and you will also not run into the things that are trying to take our children away from Islam. I highly recommend that we start trimming down our expanse of social media and going back to the basics and that's how you can do that. Search for Islam uses a Google search engine but it goes through only our websites. And then 
for your own benefit, you can check out Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, whatever you want to put on there. Answers to harsh questions. You can put the word harsh in there. It'll pop up and give you the answers to all of these things we've been talking about tonight. But especially when it comes to this subject of these man-made sciences and so on, find out what real science is. One of our websites is called scienceislam.com. And when you go there, you'll see real scientists who have come to Islam based on understanding from the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Very real science. And that's as cool as you can get. I really encourage you to spend some time with that, especially because we've been inundated with so much attack against Islam. When you go to Facebook, when you go to the YouTube and you spend time there, you're always going to see something trying to pull you away from the right belief. I, 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 the more and more I see of it, the more I'm convinced that shaitan is playing a big part in what we're involved with in social media. Anyway, now to wrap this up. When you leave out of this area when you're pulling out of here tonight. If you forget everything that I've talked about, that's okay. That's all right. But if you forget about Allah, that's not okay. That, that's going to be a big problem. Sometimes the iman or faith is very weak, especially when you have so many different things coming at you at one time to try to take you away from the right belief. But understand this. This is a very important point. You are not on this earth for any other purpose than a test from Allah. That is the only reason you are here. There is no other reason. And that test is explained to you in the Quran. In Surah al dariya chapter 51, verse 56, Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَإِنْسِلِ الْيَعْبِدُونَ That he did not create jinn and human beings except for worship. And that is a test. What will you worship? Because if you worship a car, you want a car so bad, a special kind of car, a Lamborghini, a Bentley, a Rolls, a Mercedes, something that's, it's all you can think about. If you worship a house, a mansion by the river, so beautiful, so big, so, you know, that's all you can think about. Or if you worship a woman, because she's so beautiful, gorgeous, and attractive, and so and so, or a man, and for the same things. All of that, believe it or not, is worship. You're saying, oh, I love this, I love that. What are you really saying when you say that? Because Allah created all of us to worship something. A lot of people think that it just means a religion. And an atheist will say, I don't worship anything because I don't believe in anything. But in fact, as soon as you say you are better than something else, you have just put yourself up as an object of worship. This is very dangerous. For sure, that's the only reason you're here. What will you worship? Will you worship what Allah created? Or will you worship the creator? We have a bumper sticker that I, I, I'm going to leave some with you, and you can copy them if you want to and give them out. It's a, it, a very simple message. Worship the creator, not the creation. Then we have the website right there. Simple. And it's the message. So anybody reads that message, you can at least say on the day of judgment, I tried, I put it out there. It's there. And one man saw it and, on a car, and he... Uh, it, he talked to the, my friend, 
He said, what does that mean? My friend called me, asked me to come over, and I did. And we sat and had an appointment with the man, talked with him. 20 minutes, he accepted Islam. Next day, he sent a text message saying, this is the best day of my life because I found all the answers. And it was just a little piece of paper that said, worship the creator, not the creation. Simple as that. So I invite all of us to spend a little bit more time with the real cool Islam and not waste our time with some of the very uncool things that we're involved in, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, you left a note here. I can't talk that long. I've got to quit now. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I hope in our talk tonight that we were able to con uh, cover some of the topics that are plaguing you or that you have to deal with. People leaving Islam is definitely something that hurts all of us. But it's definitely not an answer, and it definitely needs to be treated. And we need to help those who are still in Islam and reach out to those who have left Islam to let them know that there is something here that's a lot bigger than what we thought. Come back and take another look. I do have one other website that's not connected with my Share Islam project. Share Islam, by the way, is the main project and it had so many websites in it that you don't even have to know what they are. Shareislam.com. But I have another one for those who are learning the Arabic of the Quran. It's called ReciteQuran.com. That one breaks down underneath each of the Arabic phrases what it means in English. You can look at it right there and hear it. You can click it several times and just hear it being pronounced. That way it can help you to understand what these phrases mean and how it works together. The more that you'll spend time with the Quran, inshallah, the more Allah will help you to get closer to him. I recommend that to myself and to anybody because at the end of the day, it's all about the heart. And the heart needs to be pure and clean for Allah. And the way to do that was Quran, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumallahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, we would like to thank the jama'ah who are responding uh, to us uh, uh, to this Q&A session. Let me read this question that is relevant to our topic tonight. Now, Somebody is asking Shay Yusuf and say, how to show to our children that Islam is cool when we cannot celebrate birthday? No music, no movie. What is this? Fadda. Happy birthday. Okay, first of all, who told you that was cool? What is cool about a cake that you have to bake in the oven at 300 degrees and then you covered it up with candles and you lit it up at another 280 degrees? I'm asking you, where is the cool in that? Both are concerned with fire, right? I'm just asking a question. The second thing is, do you even know where that came from? That is an ancient ancient, ancient belief in, of fire worshippers. That is why the scholars have ruled it incompatible with Islam. If you want to follow another religion, you always have that choice. But don't compromise Islam. Don't change Islam for some traditions from other religions. When it comes to birthdays, ladies especially, I want you to think about this. Who is the one who should be celebrated? If there's anybody going to celebrate, who should be celebrated? The one born or the one giving birth? Who suffered? 
who went through nine months of pregnancy, who d went through excruciating pains in the delivery room, and who is the one that's had to take care of that child until the child was old enough to walk around and throw up on everything? Who? There's no reason to celebrate your own birthday. And by the way, if you can find, you, you could say, well, then let me celebrate my mother one day a year. But if you could find any day of the year that you could say this is Mother's Day, then what about those other 364 days that you didn't live up to your responsibility? Your mother needs to be celebrated how many days? Every day. So get over it. Move forward. That is, not a, that is not an issue for a person of logic. That's not an issue for a person of real emotion to consider because we've been told your mother, your mother, your mother, and then your father, and we weren't told that there's any special day for that. That's every day. Celebrating yourself once a year to get some free cake, candy, and ice cream, and toys is not only is it very egocentric, it is also very much another religion, not Islam. Okay, number one. The other issue that you talked about, music. Do you know why music is not celebrated in Islam? Have you really thought about it? I was in the music industry from about eight years old on until I got to Islam. I, I don't claim to have been very good at it, but I fooled a lot of people and they thought I was pretty good at it, okay? I sold a lot of guitars and pianos and organs over the many years. From the time organs were considered something only in the church until every single bar and nightclub thought they had to have one because of the sound effects and all the stuff that it did. It was a multi-million dollar industry for us and it was easy for me to walk away from it when I found out that Islam doesn't allow it. You know why? Why was it easy? Because I knew it a whole lot better than most people do. I understand exactly what it does to people. I know what it replaces. And when people tell you, I need it to calm down. I need it to relax. Really? I needed to get in touch with my inner self. I've heard all of those things all my life. And those are the easy sell. That's so easy. And listen to somebody and I know exactly what kind of music to play to get them to buy a four or five thousand dollar instrument. Real easy. Because it's something inside of you that's deficient and you're relying on some outside source to calm it or pacify it, almost like a drug. And if you said, no, that's not my case, now Shaitan is talking to you right now. Because I know better. And by the way, where do you usually find musical instruments? What's going on? What is going on when you see musical instruments? What is happening? At a concert, for instance. And we know all the stuff that goes on at concerts. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. One of the biggest things about concerts is people drink alcohol. And that's okay in Islam or no? You want to change that too? You want to compromise that? What about drugs? Do you know that in the 1950s, I wasn't even mature yet. I was in the 1950s. I was driving a car, but I didn't have a license, okay? But I knew all about drugs because of my contacts with the music industry. And I was the only one that could drive the car because I didn't do the drugs. But in those days, even they knew to have a designated driver, okay? So don't. Please don't come and try to tell me about the benefits of music, all right? We even did the thing where you put the music out there with the cows and they're supposed to get better milk 
Chickens give bigger eggs, listen to music. <clears throat> yeah, right. It makes a great story, though. It makes a really, that's man-made science right there. What is the Muslim supposed to do? Let's, let's flip the, the thing the other way and talk about this. When it comes to something wrong inside of me, a feeling, I need something. That's very real, and nobody's denying that. But what is it that you really need? What were you created to do? Allah said in the Quran, I created mankind and jinn to do what? Listen to music? Celebrate birthdays? What did he say? Do you believe him or no? It's simple. You believe it or you don't. Because if you believe that, you're created to worship and you will worship something. You might even worship the music. You might even worship yourself. But you will worship something. And he is giving you the choice. Worship something he created or worship him. I want you to just reflect on that a little bit and I'll back off because we got a lot of the questions, but for sure, everything that Allah has created has a rhyme and reason to it. By the way, if you really want to know what's some great music for Muslims, listen to some of the great reciters. And you can get that from our websites. We have some of the very best rec recite Quran, by the way. You can choose the reciter who you want to recite that for you. you and we have a selection, even with children, so you can hear the, the children reciting along with their teacher. Check it out. It has a very amazing effect. Uh, before I, uh, I hand you the microphone back, I just want to say something. In New York City, most all of the taxi drivers are Muslims. Over half, most of them. And many of them like to play the Quran in the car. And they keep it down low, but sometimes when a passenger gets in the car, they'll say, oh, what's that song? I really like it. And I've had many of them come to me and say, I have this customer, this person, the passenger would like to have Quran, can you send them some tapes? Can you send them uh, a video or something? And we used to do that. Now, we can just give them the link. They can go get it. On, they can get it on their phone, the app, and they can do it right in the car. And they love it. And these are not even Muslims. So what are we doing? They understand that this is something that fulfills a part of a, a what is the word I'm looking for? A deficiency in them, and the Quran is filling it. So I recommend the Quran for that, inshallah ta'ala. And by the way, if I hurt anybody's feelings, kind of, you know, get over it. <laughs> everybody, yeah, everybody here is very cool today. So no problem. No feeling has been hurt. But there's one last question on this. The first one, no birthday, no music. How about movies? How about movies? I like movies. I love movies. You and I were in one. Remember? Actually, more than that. Depends on what you call a movie. You want to you wanna really inter be entertained you should see some of the outtakes that we've had. And one of the times that I was talking about last night, Zachary Knight and Dr. Muhammad Salah, we were supposed to be doing a fundraiser for her, <laughs> for Huda TV, and they wound up in a debate between themselves about whether or not a woman has to wear a niqab. And I'm over there going, come on, guys, you're supposed to be doing fundraising. <laughs> what are you talking about? Alhamdulillah, I remember. But there's a lot of great things that are out there for Muslims to watch. We have more than 
Uh, it's like 15 or 16,000 videos on Tube Islam alone. And all of them, as far as I know, by the way, you can upload your videos too and share it with other people on Tube Islam. You should do that. And I tell you, the more you upload there, the more possibility that you're helping other people stay in Islam or get to Islam. I highly recommend it. So movies are not haram unless there's haram stuff in them. You follow that? But if there's haram stuff in it, like half of it is about birthdays or music or whatever, then duh. False worship, by the way, is one of the worst possible things that a Muslim can get engaged with. You get hooked up with some kind of false worship, it could take you right out of Islam and you didn't know it. You didn't ask me about this, but maybe somebody did. What about things like a person has a lucky rabbit's foot? You know, you like to go around with, you've got this little lucky charm, a lucky rabbit's foot. You like to carry it with you. Have you everybody heard of that before? Yeah? It wasn't very lucky for the rabbit. Was it? I mean, he's missing a foot. He's going on crutches going, hey, that leg wasn't very good for me. So what I'm saying is, those things that we play with like that are actually Shaitan trying to get you out the door. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us about something. I want you to think about it. He said, whoever goes to a soothsayer, we translate soothsayer, somebody that plays with magic, you go to them, Allah will not accept your salah for the next 40 days. But you still have to pray anyway. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, what if, what if, you know, somebody did it, but they didn't really believe it. He said, that's what I'm talking about. If they believe it, they've got to start over. You've got to get a new shahada. Is that right? SubhanAllah. And what about the guy who just likes to read the fortune cookie? I mean, you know, you, you know fortune cookie, right? Oh, you got a Chinese meal. Let, let's just crack it open and see what it said. Oh, it says that I am about to have something really good happen in my life. Actually, you're about to have something real bad because you just read the fortune cookie. Why did you read it? You say, oh, that's extreme. Oh, really? How about your astrology? You check out, oh, Pisces, uh, Gemini, Virgo. Let me just check it out. I was born on that day, and you know, I should check and say, oh, wow, something real bad is going to happen. Yeah, it just did. This is superstition. And it is from real things that people used to believe in. You're opening up this door. It's very dangerous. Don't go there. Stay away from it. Another question before that, we just want to read a note uh, of thanks. Salam, Shah Yusuf. I've been a student of yours from YouTube yeah, since 2004. And just would like to thank you and, and hope Allah would bless you yeah, in this dunya and Jannata Ferdos in hereafter. Thank you. Amen. Question, how to respond? Yep. Jazakumallah khair. Thank you so much for that. 2004 was when YouTube started. And Allah blessed me to put the very first, U the first video on YouTube for Islam. And since then, many other people, there's over 274,000 videos on there now that have my name somehow associated with them. And for sure, it was a gift from Allah. But at the time, I didn't realize it. I thought it was a waste of time because <laughs> I said to myself, after a whole week, only 17 hits or whatever it was, it's like, forget about it. This is worthless. Who knew, right? Now, how to respond to someone who believes in God to not accept Jesus as a prophet? If I'm not wrong, the question sounds like he believed in God, 
but do not accept Jesus as a prophet. Question again. How to respond to someone who believes in God, but do not accept Jesus as a prophet? Bismillah, Actually, in this case, in the case where somebody believes in God, I like to strengthen that and talk about some of the things that we all examine when we're looking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a website that we have, shareislam.com. It's a portal, and you actually turn these images on the screen. It's a lot of fun to use it. The very second one is called God Allah, and it begins with an audio, why do Muslims say Allah? Like that. And from that, you get a lot of basic. Then on the left side of the screen, it has so many questions, and you click it, and it will give you the answers. So I like to encourage them to get more uh, fortitude and uh, foundation for their belief. Let that begin to build, because it's from an Islamic perspective. Then finally, when we come to the subject of Jesus, what was the purpose of Jesus? Now, for somebody that's been brainwashed since birth to believe that one is three and three is one in the Trinity or have the notion that Allah has to have a child that's going to grow up and then get killed for everybody else's sin. They justify that. They've, they've got 2,000 years worth of practice to come up with an answer to every question. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's not beneficial to begin by attacking that belief, to work on more about who Allah really is. All of a sudden, maybe the person could wake up to the fact that all the things that we're talking about Allah and his Ismail was Safab, for instance, he's such an ultimate, he's beyond his creation way beyond the creation, and we're only in this creation for what purpose? And we already said that, to worship Allah. Make the conscious decision to worship Allah, and we have to have people to tell us about that. So from time to time, Allah has sent messengers, over 124,000 messengers to their peoples, and different people. And now the last and final messenger, which is Muhammad Sallallahu is bringing that message to all of the humanity, all over the world, not just to his own particular community. So if we can look at that and say, this was the job of Jesus, although Jesus did fulfill scriptures, predictions, prophecies about him coming, which he did, and there's more prophecies about when he returns back to the earth. So we're the only religion on the planet that actually has evidence and proof to prove that Jesus did exist because it's in the Quran and we can prove the Quran itself and from the Hadith to prove that he will be back. And outside of Christianity, there is no other religion that goes into so much detail about prophets as particularly Jesus. This is, this is a, a, a very real opportunity to help somebody see the message that Jesus came with. And I should have said that about Jesus several times. By the way, we do have one with us right now. I, I, didn't, I don't know your name. What's your name? Vincent. Brother Vincent? Vincent? Did you say Vincent? Oh, okay. Vincent, uh, what, is, what faith are you? Christian? Okay. I spent almost 50 years in Christianity, and you probably heard me talking about pianos, organs, and that was one of the big customers I had, was all the different Christian churches. Whether I wanted to or not, I learned a lot about not just the particular, particular denominations, but about the people in them. 
you because I dealt with them. And I will tell you that there are a lot of really nice people in Christianity, personal experience, even today. But many of them are still searching. Even the leaders are still in privately trying to figure it out, trying to balance what they know and feel against what they think the Bible says. One of the most important subjects is the Bible itself. Do you know that there are only two religions that require a belief in the Bible? Of course, Christianity, but that Islam also requires a belief in the original Bible, the one we don't have anymore, but we have to believe it. If we don't believe that, we can't be a Muslim. If we don't believe in the miracle birth of Jesus, we can't be a Muslim. The fact that he is a miracle birth doesn't mean he's a God, though. You know why? Because he was created from a mother. Is that true? A mother was impregnated and gave, and went through the nine months and delivered. Normal birth. Except no man involved, right? But how about Eve? She came out of Adam, right? We don't worship her, though, do we? And how about Adam? He came from dust. He was a creation of Allah, but we don't worship him. So we have every aspect. We have a man, a human created from dirt itself. We have a woman coming out of a man. We have a man coming out of a woman. That is Jesus, is a miracle birth. But then you also are a miracle because you're coming from the combination of a mother and a father. All of that's miracle from Allah. So when you balance it like that, then you start thinking, well, wait a minute, hold on. Did Jesus tell people to worship him? Not even in the translation did he say, I'm God, worship me. You have to pull verses and take them out of context to get the message. And I know which ones they are because they used to do it, okay? But for sure, the Christian is the closest to the Muslim. And Allah says something about that in the Quran. I'll just read the last half of it. Allah said, if the people of the Bible believe, it's better for them. From them are believers, but most of them are uh, disobedient corruptors. Is that a good way to translate it? Disobedient corruptors. So maybe, maybe Allah will help you to see and understand more. And hopefully you'll be with us on more occasions and share with us. But you are definitely most welcome at any time. At no pressure on you to do anything more than just be you. And we can accept that. No problem. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you very much. Okay. There are a lot of questions been uh, forward to all of us, but time won't permit us to answer all the questions. There will be a last one that I'm going to share uh, with Sheikh Yusuf Estes. And the rest, if you are following our classes here every Saturday or Sunday, inshallah, this question will be answered, inshallah. There's a lot of uh, Q&A normally in our classes. So for those who miss uh, the classes before this, you're welcome to our Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday classes. Start at 11 morning until Zohar time. Now, the last question is, Islam is cool, so a Muslim should be cool. But how to stay cool in this day? Again, Islam is cool, so a Muslim should be cool. How to stay cool in this day? Why? A lot of things happen to Muslim community. There may be a lot of happening among the Ummah. That is very, yeah, I would say that, yeah, hurts a lot of people. So how do you keep yourself cool further? Before I give you the answer, question, I have to tell you that it makes me feel a little bit nervous sitting next to somebody that I have to 
ask him all the time about so many questions. Uh, yeah, I was bothering him so much yesterday when, when we were writing and I was asking you all about uh, some of the subjects. But anyway, for sure, this subject has been answered by Islam. Our Prophet Islam, he didn't say the word cool, but he was telling people to keep calm, collected, and not respond. Definitely don't get hot. What he said when somebody asked for advice was, la tagdab. And the person said more, and he said, la tagdab, la tagdab, la tagdab. He kept saying this, do not become angry. Actually, that's a translation. But a better translation is don't be wrathful. Anger is something that all of us wind up at some time or another getting it. We get angry. But they have something called anger management. Because some people get wrathful. Wrathful, wrath is when you will do something about the anger. In other words, you get upset because somebody cut you off in traffic. It happened to my brother-in-law in Houston, Texas, many, many years ago. A taxi driver cut him off in his van. He just had to slam on the brakes on a freeway. Now, in Texas, they have an open carry permit that you can keep your uh, weapon right out in the open. In those days, he used to carry a 40 five automatic laid it up on the dashboard of his van and he pulled it out and he started shooting at the tires of the taxi driver he got mad because he got pulled over by the police i guess he didn't realize the taxi driver had some microphone and get on the microphone and say help 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 i'm being shot at and so here come the police and they pulled him over and he got mad because he had to pay a ticket. He got a ticket for discharging a firearm and uh, something about the safety of people and so on. I don't know if you can carry guns like that in this country, but to me, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I know we have this right to bear arms, but it's, it's crazy especially when people don't know how to manage their anger. And this may be one of the big problems that we have in our country right now with people getting shot all over the place. Our Prophet Sallallahu told us, don't let the anger overtake you. In other words, stay cool. How can I stay cool when these people are doing these things? How am I supposed to stay cool when the Rohingya Muslims are being murdered, raped, and slaughtered, and the videos are out there, you can see that. How am I supposed to be cool when the brothers and sisters in Syria have gone through the, losing their homes, losing their lives, losing their respect and dignity, and that they're in these refugee camps? How am I supposed to be cool when all of these things are going on around me? One of the things I think you could take advantage of is and take comfort in is that Allah has blessed you that that didn't happen to you and that you're still here and if it has happened to anybody in this room or that you know at least they've moved past that there are things that you have that happened to you in this life that there's no control from you on it and it will happen and it is a test from Allah. Don't think that Allah doesn't know what's going on. This is all part of the scheme of things and he's testing the people doing it and the people it's being done to and those people who are observing it and doing nothing about it. But what should we do about these things and there are things provided through legal systems and there's things that are provided through Islam that do not command us to go out and chop off heads and go crazy and, and do wild stuff. Be cool. 
means really to keep down the heat. And, and in conclusion, I want to add this one thing to it. The opposite of being cool is what? Being hot. Islam is teaching us that malayaka are made out of light. Angels are made from light. Is that right? Nur. And the jinn are made out of fire with no smoke on it. Fire. When a jinn or a shaitan is coming to you, getting you upset, what is the thing that you feel? Is there anybody that feels real cool when they get angry? Like, oh, wow, I feel so nice and angry. It doesn't work. But what you do feel when you get angry is, look, hey, man, you know what? I'm not really angry yet, but I'm getting there. And they feel real hot inside. And they're boiling over. And they, these are the words that we use. I'm hot, man. Just stay back. Hmm? Is that right? And your body temperature feels like you're burning inside. But if they took your temperature, you probably mean the same temperature. But why do you feel so hot all over? The nervous system is responding to the shaitan and the shaitan really is made from fire, and you are feeling that. And that's a good time to go, huh? oh, wait a minute. Rasul Sallallahu told us what to do. First of all, he said, don't get angry. We know that. But what did he else did he say? When you do have this thing start to come over you, if you're standing up, what should you do? Sit down. What else can you do? Something that will take the heat away right away. What is what? Make will do? Don't do it with hot water, okay? It won't help. Cold water. It, it works. It really will work. Make that will do. And then chill. Stop talking about the subject. That's another thing. If you get away from the subject, and if somebody is arguing with you and you're getting mad, don't keep going after them when they're trying to get away. They say, I don't want to talk about it. No, 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 you're going to talk about it. No, don't do that. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. That is shaitan coming to you and to them. So that's a good way to wrap up our story tonight about this being cool versus being under the influence of the one who's eternally hot and heading for a hotter place. May Allah keep us always cool and keep us in the best of shape with him and put us in the best place of being cool in gen close to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I think we are coming to, to the end of our program tonight. But before we depart, firstly, don't forget to pray for all the scholars, especially Sayyid Suhastis, who is going to leave us tomorrow. So may Allah bless all of us. May Allah protect all of us, forgive all our sins, and also forgive the sin of those who are not present tonight. And may Allah forgive the sin of the living among us and the dead among us, the male and the female, the young and the old among us. And may Allah accept all our prayer and also may Allah increase sabar and give us cool iman. Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa bila tawfiqi wa laqri da'wana wa alhamdulillah alamin. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.